it's Father Hayes, and we are coming to you with another one of our videos in our series on the Mass. Now, what you'll probably notice if you've been following the other videos is that I'm in a different position right now. Now, we're going to do this video. Our topic will be the Prayers of the Faithful, which will be the last video we do for the Liturgy of the Word. But what I wanted to do is be here next to the altar because, in a way, this is the really the transition point to the liturgy of the Eucharist. Even though the priest is usually at the chair and we have the lector reading the intercessions on Sunday from the ambo, you know, nobody's really at the altar. And yet we're making that transition from liturgy of the word into liturgy of the Eucharist, into the sacrifice. Why is that? Well, the first thing we have to remember is the person of Jesus Christ, right? And Jesus Christ is, the letter of the Hebrews tells us, um, is the eternal high priest and all the priests that came in the Old Testament the high priest of the Old Testament was a foreshadowing of the person of Jesus the letter to the Hebrews tells us that those priests who were chosen from among men were there to make uh, offer gifts and sacrifices um, to the father they were there to be the representative between man and God and so that's really the identity of Jesus as the eternal high priest as he is that mediator between humanity and God. And then later in the letter to the Hebrews, it even says Jesus, when he was in the flesh, offered prayers and supplications, primarily during his passion, which is what we, we bring make present to us in the liturgy of the Eucharist. And the letter of the Hebrews says, and God answered him, okay? So what we're doing as the, the prayers of the faithful is we, as members of the mystical body, are beginning to exercise our priestly identity because by virtue of baptism we are grafted into the person of christ which means we are grafted into his priesthood right he's not separate his personhood is not separate from his priesthood right so we are operating in union with the one and only high priest in his role as mediator and intercessor and that begins with uh, what the church calls the prayers of the faithful or the common prayer or the universal prayer now this prayer was actually reinstated by the second vatican council it had been uh, incorporated in a different aspect into the mass prior to that so the second vatican council and the document uh, on the liturgy paragraph 53 uh, talks about bringing this prayer back and it says by this prayer in which the people are to take part. So the Second Vatican Council, the Church Fathers, very specifically focus on our participation in this prayer. All right? It's a prayer of intercession. And it is done uh, focusing on specific aspects of intercession. So our prayers are for the Holy Church, for civil authorities, for those oppressed by various needs, for all mankind, and for the salvation of the entire world. So there's a hierarchy of petitions that we see laid out by the church. Now, where does the church get this? It actually, this is a, a restating of St. Paul's uh, letter to Timothy, where he, he exhorts Timothy to be really participating in this intercessory role for these specific intentions. Right? So even though we hear the intentions articulated differently when we come to Sunday Mass, what we're seeing is the members of the mystical body acting in union with Christ the head in his priesthood and in his role as intercessor for humanity and articulating that hierarchy of intentions. So in that, what we're beginning to see then is that, that transition from where we were remembering what Christ had done, when we were hearing the Word of God and receiving the Word of God and the liturgy of the Word, now we are making that transition into uh, participating with the one and only High Priest in that perfect sacrifice that redeemed all of humanity. So there's a, there's a symmetry there uh, that hopefully we can see. Uh, but it really also hopefully will bring home to us again a deeper sense of our own identity when we come to Mass. One of the phrases we talk about a lot is full and active participation in the liturgy. Well, what that means is really full and active awareness of our identity as members of the baptized, members of the mystical body, participating in the actions of the eternal high priest 
as mediator and intercessor and as priest and sacrificial victim, which we'll begin to unpack as we get into the videos on the Liturgy of the Eucharist. May God be with you.